that Jesus Christ has revealed a part of Scripture where he is exposing and also uh, revealing um, false prophet Joseph Smith, who is definitely one of the greatest false prophets that has ever existed in the history of creation in human form. Specifically for his part of having people directly baptize themselves for the dead. Okay, That act, of course, is um, an act of um, complete deception in, in his followers. He doesn't have as many followers as other false uh, prophets like Muhammad or Buddha. Uh, however, he does have or the Catholic religion, but he does have that one uh, claim to fame where he's actually got his people baptizing themselves for the dead knowingly. And the whole world is kind of seems to be at peace with that. So he is definitely amongst the, one of the greatest uh, false prophets ever. And of course, Jesus said that there's a time coming when they will persecute you, they will kill you, and think they're doing God a favor. And so, of course, Mormon missionaries, the Mormon religion, they persecute Christians, and they do kill them spiritually, no question regarding that. And um, Isaiah says that in the end time, they're going to end up blaspheming God. And what that, how, what that final manifestation will be, I don't know, but... Um, they will end up blaspheming God because the mountain is going to completely fall and they will be persecuted uh, by those same demons that they serve. Now, uh, false prophet Joseph Smith is mentioned in Isaiah chapter 57. I have three different versions here. I don't have the King James with me. I do have the King James. I don't have the... Um, I had it the smaller version. It's not. It's in the. Uh, it's in the camper. This is the, the larger version. I don't have a lot of room. In Isaiah fifty-seven. I'll keep it open. We're going to start reading. In uh, this version, or in, in the RSV version, and in this version, I'm going to parallel this. And this begins in chapter 3. Um, okay, so chapter 3, RSV Bible in 57 of Isaiah. But you draw near hither sons of the sorceress, offspring of the adulterer and the harlot. And that's Lucifer, Satan, the devil. Of whom are you making sport? Against whom do you open your mouth wide and put out your tongue? Okay? And so putting out the tongue is also the way they speak. It's the Hegelian language. It's the vomit. God says that I will vomit you out of my mouth. So they're not speaking out of the mouth of God, they're speaking out of their, the mouths of the devils that they serve, and it's, it's, it's vomit before God. It's all, it's like the Buddha, uh, the Hindus, okay? If you've ever seen this, and I did a video regarding that in street ministry yesterday, a short video. Um, let me play that video for you right now, and then we'll get back to this. Keep checking to see if the battery is still, if it's still recording. That 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 is a uh, an ape man or woman. That is an elephant. Looks like an elephant woman with four hands. That's absolute. That's that's what they're doing in the laboratories today. Is they're mixing human genes with 
animal gene, and they're coming up with hybrids, like Crimeas. That's what they worship. That's their gods. It is a um, complete tearing apart of the creation. It, it is a uh, complete ripping apart all the members, all the ways of creation, and mixing all those ways that, and that is contrary to the laws of God. The laws God has laws in place for the universe to to be created in, in the manner in that God wants the universe to be created. Well, what what they're doing once again is they're ripping it apart, limb by limb, adding and taking away of the creation process, and they just it's a cesspool of mingling with things that ought not to be mingled together. It's absolutely disgusting. So the vomit that God is speaking regarding is that very exact thing. It, it's, it is a, 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 mix, a mingling, a mixture. It is taking the Word of God, okay, and, and just scrambling it all up like the creation. Mingling it with, with um, not properly dividing the Word of Truth, as God says. Everything has to be in context. It has to be line upon line, precept upon precept. Right when we're when we're uh, taking the the Bible, it's like a puzzle. You take a piece here, take a piece there, put it there, take a piece, and you got the whole picture. Well, what they're the, the vomit, what they're vomiting and worshiping, that and the vomit that they are worshiping is is the piece of the puzzle being put together improperly. And that's what Lucifer, Satan, and Dove that does. That's the chaos that it does. It actually dismembers the entire creation, it pulls it apart, okay? Uh, it dismembers everything and adds the mem those different members in places where they're not supposed to be. As uh, says in Leviticus, I think it is, that a man is not to put on female garments uh, and a woman is not to put on the garments of men. So you see, that's, that's what Lucifer Satan does. So in verse 3, but you draw near hither, sons of the sorceress, offspring of the adulterer and the harlot. It's Lucifer, Satan, and devil. It's that this is speaking regarding male and female. Sorceress is, is, is uh, the Holy Spirit in the Bible is, uh, is, is regarded as a female, as she. Okay, Proverbs 8, many different places. And of course, Jesus Christ is the physical manifestation. He is Alpha and Omega. Jesus male, Christ female. Now, and everybody plays their role as, as, as led of the Holy Spirit. In verse 4, of whom are you making sport? Against whom do you open up your mouth wide and put out your tongue? That is in Revelation chapter 16, when those frogs come out of the mouths of the dragon, the false prophet, and the beast. It's vomit. And it calls men to gather to war. It makes men righteous in uh, completely decimating the entire planet and everything that's on it. Joel says that in front of them is like the Garden of Eden, but behind them is nothing but destruction. It's, it's desolation. So, of uh, whom do you... So, and put out your tongue. Are you not children of transgression, the offspring of deceit? their sons of Satan. You who burn with lusts among the oaks under every green tree. Now, these trees are people. There's oaks are um, one type of a people, and, uh, and you have the... Uh, uh, an oak is a very stout, thick, robust tree, and uh, you have um, every... And under every green tree means that every tree, every human being that is given in to sin and saying it's okay to sin. Not only do they do those sins, but they actually approve those people who do those. Those are green trees. Okay? Being flamed with mighty ones. You see the oak is the mighty ones. Under every green tree. Slaying the children in the valleys under the clefts of the rock. So, under, 
in this version is the same. They're, they're slaying their children. They're giving their children a sacrifice to Molech under the clefts of the rocks, and that is baptism. Okay? That is actual water baptism. Now, in verse... Uh, you who burn with lust among the oaks under every green tree, who slay your children in the valleys under the clefts of the rocks. Question mark. Among the smooth stones of the valley is your portion. Smooth stones of the valley. Okay. These are, once again, um, smooth stones of the shadow of the valley of death. It's where you're going to lay down. It's, it's, it's the valley of death without the protection of God. Okay, smooth stones. It's a, it's a south wind. It's a feel-good wind. It's a great thing. It's a religion. It's like, uh, oh, I, I know the, the Book of Mormon is true, and uh, yeah, I believe the Book of Mormon is true, and uh, they're all very nice, until, of course, you speak through the Holy Spirit, and then they manifest demons. It says, so, so in verse 6, it says, among the smooth stones of the stream is your portion. They, they are your lot. That's what you're going to get. That's your reward, God is saying. Also to them, to the demons, you have poured a drink offering. You have offered a grain offering. Am I comforted in these? What you're bringing to me, these demons? You see? On a high and lofty mountain... You have set your bed. There too you went up to slaughter, a slaughtering. So there too, so this is the mixture of the Holy Spirit and demons. In verse 7, it says, You have brought a cereal offering here in, in this in, in the RSV. Okay, and cereal offering is many different, it's uh many grains. Now there's legions of devils. Uh, verse 7, upon a high and lofty mountain you have set your bed. It's a, and that is sealed fate. Okay, so I do have notes here. Um, okay, and I, I went over past some notes that I have here. In, in, in this version, let me start here in verse 4. With whom do you act so familiarly? It means unfamiliar spirits, baptism for the dead. And whom do you open your mouth and stick out your tongue? Why? You are children of iniquity, offspring of treachery. You who inflame yourselves among the terebinths, they, they inflame themselves. They increase themselves in stature, spiritual stature also, among the terebinths, under every verdant tree. And this is false idol gods, the terebinths, among the terebinths, false idol gods. So here it says, you, in, that's in verse 5, says, you who burn with lust among the oaks, Okay, under every green tree. Here it says, you who are being inflamed with mighty ones. Okay, these are, it's iron and clay. It's what it is. Men being led of demonic spirits, spirits and everyone underneath them, all the green trees, all the Uh, and they are the stones, all the, the, the followers, and uh, those that are even outside the congregation, who slaughter children in the wadis among the clefts of the rock. In the wadis, the wadis of Egypt, among the clefts of the rock. Offering to Molech, Water baptism for the dead. In verse 6, 
with such are are your share and portion that's hellfire they that are your allotment they they are your allotment to them you have poured out libations presented offerings that is other souls should I relent in the face of this and that is what is offered to God so uh, in verse 6 I just want to touch this in verse 5 says and this version says, who slaughter children in the wadis among the clefts of the rock. In verse 57, here in verse 5, in this version, says, slaying the children in the valleys under the clefts of the rocks. Okay, so what this is saying here in the King James Version, it is referring to water baptism. Also, it says here, I will, in verse 57, Slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Okay, they're the rocks of the devil. Okay, in uh, Peter 2 says that you as living stones are being built up a spiritual priesthood. You know, to offer spiritual prayers to God being built up in a, in a, in a spiritual priesthood for God. So we are rocks. And uh, we are stones, and then Jesus is the rock. But Jesus Christ is the head of the church. So anybody, so the rocks here are the leaders, okay, that have put themselves in a place of God. Now, on, in 7 says, On a high and lofty hill you have set your couch, and that's it there, the rocks. There too you have gone up to perform sacrifices. Okay, so so there's there's he's saying there as well. You he, he went there as well. So you have some of the Holy Spirit, and you also have. And he's talking to his covenant. Some of these rocks don't have the Holy Spirit at all. So you can imagine, because Satan has ministers that mimic the office of the children of Jesus Christ. On a high and lofty mountain, you have set your bed. It says here your couch where you rest. The bed in the Bible means um, what you've been raised up in, what your sleep is at night. I mean, where, where is your, um, you know, where, it means how you've been raised up, your bed, and bed also means grave, okay? So, uh, in verse, on a high and lofty mountain, you have set your bed. That's the mountain of Esau. There too. You went up to slaughter a slaughtering. Okay? And this is a slaughtering is always to God all the time. Every time something is slaughtered, it has to be devoted to God. It has to give thanks to God. And it's for God. So God says to you, they're either slain. He says, as for these who didn't want me to rule over them, bring them over before me and slay them. So they're either going to be slain in the Holy Spirit or they're going to be slain in Lucifer, Satan, the devil, and there's mixtures. And it's a spiritual slaughtering, not a physical one. But it, at the end, it, it, people die physically without believing in God. So spiritually, they're going to, uh, what they believe spiritually is what they will die physically. In verse 8, says, in this version, the RSV says, Upon a high and lofty mountain you have set your bed, and thither you went up to offer sacrifice. In verse 8, so these are the, um, when I was in Petra, I climbed up the, the mountain, and there was, um, I have photos of it, it was a, um, an altar where they used to offer burnt uh, human sacrifices. You could see that the steps, there were platforms, platforms. The Holy Spirit showed me that's where they were set a guard. That's where they were set their gods, right? As the person to be offered was walking up these 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 stairs to motivate, to keep, to keep motivated. And there, that uh, altar, it was the highest hill in Petra. It was overseeing the house of the king. 
because it was devoted to a higher power, it was devoted to God, and that's how they captivated the people. Now, in verse 8, it says, also behind the doors and their posts, and I forgot to look up the word posts, and, and behind the doors and their posts, okay, so this would be, you know, door posts where they, where they sprinkle the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ, where they, um, it was the, where they, um, the Passover, when the Passover would come, they would see the blood and, and it would pass and, and, and the story would pass over the, the house as instructed of God. And so it went to kill its own people. And the door, behind the doors, it means the symbol. It means what's inside the soul. It's hidden in secret. So on the Mormons, the Mormons, um, behind the doorposts of the Mormons would be what's the symbol Right, what would be the symbol of more of the Mormon Church? And many would say it is the um, Freemason sign. Okay, so that's behind the door, behind also behind the doors and the, their posts. Okay, what what the door is is uh, is uh, um, fastened on. Okay, so this the, this door this would be like a portal. It's a gateway. Where the uh, the dead spirits the of, of the religion gain entrance. That's how they got entrance. Okay, through that door and through the door the doorposts that are um, opening up, allowing the door to open or holding the door in place. There, and you have set your bed. It says, also behind the doors and their posts, you have set up your remembrance. In this version, verse 8 says, behind the door and the doorposts, you have set up your symbol. Okay, symbol. You have set up your remembrance. Okay, in this version, it says... Uh, in verse 8, a be behind your doorposts, this is a secret chamber, you have directed your thoughts. Abandoning me, you have gone up on the couch you made so wide. It's the wide road to destruction. Okay, so this here is. And verse 7, upon a high lofty mountain you have set your bed. It means a sealed fate. They've set it. It's sealed fate. Behind the door, I can't read what this, this is an inner place. And the doorpost, you have set your symbol for deserting me. You have uncovered your bed. This is the grave, the placement after death. You have gone up to it. You have made it wide. It's the wide road. It says here, abandoning me, you have gone up onto couch you made so wide, you have made a covenant with them, that is the covenant with death, Isaiah 15, 18. You, for you have departed from me and have gone up to them, you have made your bed wide and made a covenant with them, this is the other version, you have loved their bed where you saw their hand. Feels good. Feels great. Hail Satan. Right? And you have made a bargain for yourself with them. You have loved their bed. You have looked on nakedness. Okay? And that is the, um, the reality of what the nature is of those spirits. It's in the RSV. So, in verse 9... This is verse 8. You saw their hand. Verse 8 at the end of verse 8 here says, You have loved betting with them. You have chosen lust. Okay? Etc. More than just lust, but that's what they, it's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. 
And verse 9 says, You have approached the king with oil, anointed, anointed, the spirits of anointing that is in them. You have provided many perfumes, that is, many fragrant offerings. And you have sent your envoys afar, even down to the nether world, invoked the dead spirit. They've sent missionaries and have invoked the dead spirits. They've called them up from, from the pit of hell. Here in this version says, And you went to the sovereign with ointment and increased your perfumes, and you sent your messengers far off and lowered yourself even to hell. Why? Because they're causing people to sin. They're causing people to fall. You journeyed to Molech, in verse 9 in RSV, with oil, and multiplied your perfumes. You sent your envoys voice off and sent down even to Sheol. This is also correct. So they're saying you went to the sovereign. Here it says you went, you have approached the king with oil. That could be the king of Assyria. They've appro approached the sovereign, it says here which is also um, God himself. God says, I've seen it. Okay, I know what you're doing. But this is what this is saying. This is the, the reality that it is the stronger um, way would be that they, they would, he would say, God, Satan is your God. I never knew you. So when, 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 when the world offers uh, demonic things that do not please God, the devil takes credit. The devil is the one who takes credit for that. The devil is the one who is being invoked. So to say you journeyed, you journeyed to Molech is actually more accurate as, a, as an interpretation. But in Malachi, they approached God. If you read in Malachi, they gave offerings to God. And he says, you sent me these offerings. Shall I accept them before your hand? Send it to your government. Would they be happy? Would, would he accept that of you? You're, 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 you're giving me lame offerings. You're giving me mixtures. And God knows because he only accepts the things that are his. And so there are just bits and pieces of information that he's receiving. As a shepherd saves a sheep, the sheep from the mouth of a lion, a leg or a a limb, a small part of the animal here and there. So have you approached me. Now, uh, in verse 10, so this is a spiritual offering of, of children, a spiritual eating of children also. Okay, that's verse 9. So in verse 10, through, this is, this is the, verse 10 is the prophecy when I read verse 10, I saw Joseph Smith. The Holy Spirit showed me. And verse 10 says, Through wearied by much travel, you never said, I give up. Okay? What God is saying regarding Joseph Smith here also is that he was searching much travel. The Bible says in Daniel, they will travel to and fro in the end times. And information will be increased. They're thirsty. Oh, gosh. The next video regarding that uh, speaks regarding how in Amos they said they'll be traveling to another nation, another town in order to search for water, but they will not be satisfied. Okay, so here it says, though wearied by much travel, you never said I give up. He was searching, searching in the constellations. You know what happens when you search in the constellations and you open yourselves up to the elemental spirits of the universe and invite them in your your soul, you become completely possessed of devils. I've seen the end result. Up in, up in personal. I was speaking to the demons inside the souls. They were speaking to me. The Holy Spirit allowed this. And that's how the person received those demonic spirits. They received those demonic spirits through meditation in, uh, what was it called? I forget the name of the place. It was a, an Eastern meditation meditation school of meditation and that's and he and 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 he 
received badly, badly cursed of thousands, fragmentations of demons. Just through meditation, meditating and opening up his, his windows for those spirits to, to enter in. So what happened here in verse 10, though you weird, you were though, though weird with much travel, you never said I give up. You found gratification for your lust. And so you never cared, Joseph Smith. He never cared. He just wanted to find something, some gratification. He didn't care. In Isaiah 57, 10, in this version, says, You have wearied yourselves with your many wanderings. All these false prophets, all, this, all these people. Yet you did not say, I give up. You have found the life of your hand, of yourself, of your hand, physical, of your own nature, of what you've been doing. Therefore, you were not grieved. In the RSV, you were wearied with the length of your way, but you did not say it is hopeless. You found new life for your strength, and so you were not faint. In verse 11 says, Who did you dread and fear that you lied and did not remember me, did not give me a thought? Who did you fear? God says perfect love casts out fear. Who are you afraid of? Maybe, you know, they're afraid of not agreeing with the elemental spirits. And did not remember me, the odor of God. The great, the creator, the breath within us all. Whom they first began the search for. Have I not held my peace even for a long time? And so you did not fear me. And that's what the Bible says. He went on, a, uh, the, 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 the owner, he, he rented out the world, he, put a, he dug a wine press in, he built a tower, and he uh, rented it out, and then he left and went on a long journey. He came back and they forgot all about him. And they ended up killing him. They ended up murdering him. You know? As, as the, the parable is, that's just a very quick rendition of the parable. I have not held my peace for a long time. What did they say? They said, oh, he won't do anything good. He won't do anything bad. God's not doing anything. He's not going to judge. God's not going to judge. He, he doesn't do anything. Where is he? And so you did not fear me. That's the indoctrination of wicked spirits. So that's in verse 11. And of whom have you been, the, the, the birds of the air, the whisperings of demonic spirits, and of whom have you been afraid or feared that you have lied and not remembered me, nor taken it into your heart, your spirit? Have I not been silent even from of old, and you have not feared me? Question mark. Verse 11, whom do you dread and fear that you tell lies? But you gave no thought to me, you paid no heed it is because I have stood idly by so long that you have not feared, that you have no fear of me. Once again, in brackets, God will do nothing. I hereby pronounce judgment, verse 12, upon your deeds. So now, he says, well, I, when I come back, what am I going to find? Well, he says, this is what God is doing. He's letting it happen. And now he's saying, I hereby pronounce judgment upon your deeds, your assorted idols, the cereal offering, shall not avail you, shall not save you when you cry out. They shall all be borne off by the wind, the chaff and the breeze, he says. He says he will blow on them. When God blows on them, he says he will blow on them and they will wither. It's the threshing floor. It's the threshing. There'll be nothing left. Snatched away by a breeze, the chaff that's, that, that blows all those parts of the statue of Nebuchadnezzar, Dread Star, that was crushed by the rock that was hewn out of the mountain. But those who trust in me shall inherit the land and possess my sacred mount. So they're, they're a trial. These 
are a trial. They're a test for all humanity. God says, I've chosen you out of the furnace of affliction. From these, this is what molds the inheritance of the Lord God. We have to come out and touch nothing unclean. God wants the creation to expose the creation. God wants us to rise above all of this and expose it and conquer it. Now, here shall not save they um, avail your sort of idol shall not save you shall not uh, shall not avail you they shall not save you when you cry out they shall all be born of by the wind they shall not save you when you cry out go and cry out to your gods and ask them if they will save you in your time of me because I've called out to you in time of your prosperity you said no we will not serve this has been the day the way ever since your youth you have not obeyed my voice I called out to you in my time of need, when I called you, you said, and you did not answer. He says, well, when you call out to me, then I will not answer. And then you will know that I am the Lord. And this speaks of better also regarding um, the Mormon religion also. And Isaiah that says, in the end, they will turn and they will curse their God. Okay, so in the last, this is the last, this is the last verse in 13, says in this version, when you cry out, let your collection of idols deliver you, but the wind shall bear them all away, a breath take them away. But he who takes refuge in me shall inherit the land and possess my set-apart mountain. That is Mount um, Zion of Jerusalem, that is the spiritual inheritance in heaven with God. In the RSV, verse 13, when you cry out, it says here, I will tell you of your righteousness and your doings, but they will not help you. Okay, this is verse 12 and 13. Uh, so God is very patient and merciful with us. I will tell you of your righteousness and of your doings. Um... Oh, that, that's here in this verse. I, have I not held my peace even for a long time? It, it also means not only that he won't do nothing, but it also means that God is very patient, of course, and merciful with us. So in verse 12, I will tell of your righteousness and of your doings, but they will not help you. I will tell you of what you're doing, but they will not help you. When you cry out, they, as demons, so that they will not help you, when you cry out, let your collection of idols deliver you. The wind will carry them off. A breath will take them away. But he who takes refuge in me shall possess the land and inherit my holy mountain. Isaiah 57, 3 to 13. Joseph Smith, the... Um, founder of Mormon religion. It's what the Holy Spirit revealed. He showed me that. In verse 10, he showed me that's Joseph Smith. And to me, that sounds really much like Muhammad as well. Because of his, I guess he was uh, illiterate, so he must have had a pretty difficult time searching as well. And God is saying that even to them, even to them and their followers, but he who trusts in me will inherit the land. He who takes refuge in me shall possess the land. That is the land of our nativity in heaven. And our, the land also is, is the condition of the soul. And that has to be possessed of the Holy Spirit, it must be washed of the Holy Spirit, Titus 3, 5 to 8 to 7. But he who takes refuge in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. So that is what the Holy Spirit is wanting me to say. I hope you're edified. God bless you. Have a great day.